On this day, 20 years ago, it stopped. President George Bush Sr. declared an end to live fire training on the island of Koho'olawe. But the history of the target island now has two paths to nurture. The island bombed and battered since the attack on Pearl Harbor and the cultural gem holding stories to tell and lessons to learn. Six miles off the coast of Kihei, Maui, we cut through the morning air to the island that awaits us all, Koho'olawe. It's been about a 40-minute boat ride out here to Koho'olawe in some pretty pristine conditions, but from this vantage point, you get a really good view of another serious problem here in Koho'olawe, erosion. One of the big objectives out here is to try to stop this runoff. And on crumbling ledges, the warning signs of an even bigger problem. Uh, we do warn people that it is still dangerous on the island. Um, there are still bombs out here. Mele Como, they're asking permission to be here. Mele Kahea, request accepted. From step one, we are learning past scores of test projects, and truckloads of student volunteers will meet up with them later to the rutted trails facing fields of metal. This area and areas like this are the main reason why I have a job out here. On this day, unexploded ordnance expert Bart Maybe is not about to have his first casualty. Everybody steps where I step. If you decide to drop it in your pocket, you're gonna be missing your limo. Uh, this is a Navy five inch projectile. Uh, this is H6, it's a uh, high explosive. What you got here is the perfect example of what these crews are dealing with. This looks like three rocks, right? Well, these two are rocks. This is called an H6 high explosive. And that little piece right there can do some serious damage. This would be enough to take the cab off your truck. Ever since the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor in 1941, the U.S. military has used Koho'olawe as its training ground. <laughs> In 1965, the Navy exploded two 500-ton mountains of TNT here, enough to crack the water table and create a crater the size of a football stadium. The crater actually formed what they call an Anklin Pond, which is tidally connected to the ocean, but no physical connection to the water. Today, but in 1994, 1994 after years of protests, the Navy officially returned Koho'olawe back to the state of Hawaii and dedicated 10 years and $400 million to clean up the mess left behind. There was a lot of, oh my God, and, and how could they have done this, and how could they have gone away and left things like this. Up to 400 people a day, seven days a week, removed and recycled over 10 million pounds of metal, hundreds of vehicles, and thousands of tires. But in 2004... The work stops. Right now, about 70% of the island's surface has been cleaned up but only the surface. Digging down reveals much more. And diving into the ocean, a dangerous world now quietly cloaked in coral. Most everybody believes that this cleanup's done. And as you guys look around, I mean, it's years of dirty dishes still in the sink. Well, we have a lot of work out here. Um, we have a lot of things we need to do. The wars in Iraq and Afghanistan have sucked up the money, at least for now, that might have been used for ordnance cleanup in Koho'olawe, but not all of the work has stopped. Coming up tonight at 10, archaeologists have made some amazing discoveries while staff and volunteers are finding some pretty interesting ways to revitalize the island, even in areas so dangerous they can't even dig into the ground.